Romanticism. Okay, Romanticism is the next thing we're going to look at in the evolution of art history. It comes after the neoclassical period, and it replaces the neoclassical objectivity with emotion. This is all about romance and romance. You don't think like romance is kissy kissy. No, it's not that. This gets its name, Romanticism, from the medieval tales called romances, but not like the kind of romances kissy kissy. I'm talking like this kind of romance tale, gothic horror stories like Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Did you ever read it? I think they make you read it in high school. So that's the time period we're talking about, about 1800s. And the first painting we're going to look at is by a guy named Jericho. Now, this painting is the quintessential romanticism painting that started the whole movement, the Raft of the Medusa. It's really big, 16 by 23 feet. And it tells a true story. Let me tell you this story. Once upon a time, there was a boat called the Medusa, and it was sailing off the coast of Africa. Well, guess what? The boat sank, mostly because the captain was kind of a doink. Anyway, the crew... And the captain got in the life raft, you know, sort of like in the Titanic, they saved themselves. And they put 149 people on this makeshift raft and they tied a line to it and they started just dragging it. Well, after a little while, the captain was like, I don't want to get my toes wet and the storm's coming. So let's just cut that line and let those people, the 149 people out there, they'll, they'll figure it out. So these guys were all on the raft for 12 days with no food, no water. And they started going crazy and they and they started dying and they were starving and they even ate each other. There was cannibalism going on. And this is all a true story. Finally, they were rescued. By the time they were rescued, there were only 12 people still alive. No, 15 people. Sorry, 15 people lived out of 149 after 12 days. So um, horrible, horrible story. And, and Jericho captured it. He actually had to go to the morgue and look at like people's bodies so he could get it like realistic. And he even tied himself to a makeshift raft he made in his backyard when a storm was coming so he could kind of get a feel for it. That's dedication to the arts right there. All right, this is the next one here. Watson and the Shark by a guy named Copley. Now, this is also a true story. Watson, he's the guy down there in the water uh, with his hand reaching up. And if you look next to him, you see this big shark, dun, 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 very realistic looking shark coming to eat him. What happened was Watson decided to go for a swim in Cuba. He was, you know, he was fishing, working with the fishing boats out there. And he was only like 14 years old. And, uh, and he just decided to go for a swim. And all of a sudden the shark attacked him. So then the crew came over and they were like trying to help him get out of the water and everything like that. Well, they did get him out of the water, which is good. But, you know, you can see right here, he's pretty scared because that shark's coming in there and I'm going to eat you, going to eat you. And, they, and his long blonde locks floating in the water. He's like, help me, help me, get me out of the water. And so they reached down and they got him. But not before the shark got to strip off his flesh on his leg. And it really messed up his leg. And then Watson actually grew up and became governor of England, I think it was, um, someplace in England. So I don't know where. But I know he was governor. So anyway, that's cool. Good for Watson. He survived a shark attack. That's cool. All right, next I like this painting because it keeps your eyeball in the picture by the direction the people are pointing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Like this guy right here with a spear is spearing down into the shark. But the shark is like coming across, oh, I messed up, coming across to Watson. And Watson's like reaching up. So it keeps your eye in the whole picture, which is pretty cool. All right, moving on. The last thing I want to show you is American Romanticism. Now, American Romanticism happened in America in the Hudson River Valley, and they made a school called the Hudson River School. It wasn't actually a real school. It was just like a bunch of guys who all decided that they were going to make romantic pictures of America and how beautiful the nature is. So this guy, Thomas Cole, he started the Hudson River School, and they all like looked over the Hudson and started making pictures. So it was kind of cool, paintings of the area at the time. And just very romantic of pictures of America, as you can see here in the Hudson River Valley. Now, I'm from New York. I'm from Yonkers, New York. And the Hudson River flows right through Yonkers, New York, and goes down to the city. So at the time, it kind of looked like this picture right here. But if you go there today, it actually looks like this. So it's a little different. Now, this is Yonkers. And I used to go fishing right here on this pier. <laughs> I keep doing that. Right here on the pier and uh, with my friend Gary, and we go catch um, baby bluefish. We call them snapper at the time right out of the Hudson River. Okay, so that's all you need to know about romanticism. See you next time.